its Root Pike Watershed Initiative Network. Root okay. Pike Win. And if you Google that, you can find um, links to the watershed plan for the Pike River, the Root River, and the one that is ongoing now for the Wind Point watershed. And what's, and what's the goal? The goal is to get it clean, right? The goal is to restore the river, yes, to clean up the water, to identify the uh, impairments that we have, and identify them in, in a way that we can do something about it, instead of just bitching about it. because we're doing ongoing watershed monitoring at key strategic points, which will allow us to identify what they call non-point source pollution. And I don't believe in non-point. It all comes from someplace. But now we're looking for those sources and we can identify them quantitatively and then hold people responsible for uh, changing and improving the watershed. And you've already accumulated three years of data, right? We're on our third year of data right now, and the data search is growing. Uh, first it was on the Root River, within Racine, and then Racine County. Now we're coordinating the data that that Julie Kinzelman is collecting with the data from MMSD, Milwaukee Metropolitan okay. Sewer. They have also a series of data putting it all together and put some people that are smart enough to make sense of that data, some statisticians, and show us the fluctuations and compare those fluctuations to weather events to spring, summer, fall, snow, ice removal, or what have you. We're also doing collection out in the county, um, the west branch of the uh, Root River Canal has a couple of private sewer plants on them, and we monitor just below those sewer plants for E. coli to make sure that the plants are processing the sewage properly. So they're not toxic? There's indication because of the high E. coli levels and the concentration directly below the sewer plant that uh, perhaps that is a source, but nobody's willing to say this is a smoking gun. I'm yep. looking for smoking guns. But uh, I have to be patient and deal with scientists and engineers and statisticians. What I like you mentioned earlier about the snow removal, how you've changed that so that uh, there is less salt. What is being added? One of the things that we're seeing added that some of the municipalities are working with is beet juice. Apparently, if you mix that with the salt, it um, changes the Richard. melting point and that the salt is more effective at colder temperatures. And if they can get a slurry of beet juice onto the highway and then when they sprinkle salt, it actually works instead of going down the storm drains at rock salt and then dissolving when things warm up and ending up in the river. So these are some of the processes that we're trying to develop and develop them so that they can be used by the municipalities efficiently and confidently. And still, salt provides safety, and we have safety issues, but it also it rolls changes, and changes the water chemistry. And what we're trying to do is balance both of them, balance both of those real needs. We have fun because the people, the farmers that 
are always pointing their fingers at the uh, culverts over here and saying that's where the problems are coming from. And of course the city public works people are saying it's from the runoff from the farm fields, from the agricultural runoffs, whether it's applying too much fertilizer or not using contour farming or not providing, plowing right up to the canal's edge and not um, establishing a buffer zone between the cropland and the, the watershed. These are all things that we're trying to promote. And I understand the farmer who has an investment in land and his job is to raise corn, not grow buffers. And prairie grasses. And prairie grass and that sort of thing. Yet we have a responsibility to treat the environment with a lot more respect than we're doing. The dollar rules, but it, it can't rule at the expense of our surroundings, otherwise we destroy it. Yeah, like what you mentioned about uh, how we borrow nature from our children, basically. So what is your dream? My dream. You heard me say this before. I want my grandkids to be able to swim. And I'll tell you that when I started fishing here, it wasn't safe to... to uh, weighed in because if you did cut your foot you were going to get something that was pretty bad right upstream from here not far mm -hmm. this is the site of an old tannery uh, we've heard the term mad as a hatter okay the hatter was mad because of all the mercury that went into the tanning process. And we still have some mini Superfund sites right along the river that need to be dealt with on a <laughs> environmentally sensitive manner aside from just capping it. We also went through a time when we were burning coal that we were looking for a place to get rid of all the coal ash. It goes in as landfill in many places. We had a, a terrific uh, foundry industry, of, and there are many sites along here that were filled with foundry slag. And that foundry slag is not clean stuff. No, no, it's cancerogenic, it's radioactive, there's a lot of things wrong with it. And these are, these are the things that we've inherited from previous generations. And now science is creating all sorts of new chemicals. Another concern that we have is medical waste. Not just the flushing down the toilet of your leftover pills, but guess what? You're flushing down the toilet your pills every time you take them, when they pass through. And we have the potential of a watershed full of pharmaceuticals that we really don't know how they're going to impact the environment. And these are some of the many concerns that we're trying to get a handle on. Just mention once again the initiative about the phosphorus and the phosphates. That was the one thing that was good also to know. Well, one of the uh, Limiting or eliminating the phosphorus fertilizer. Long. There are communities up in the village of Franklin that have adopted a no phosphorus uh, fertilizer program. And we have been able to show that you can still have a green grass without covering it with, with yeah. that stuff. 
phosphorus has been a uh, a mainstay in many of the things that we do. Phosphorus, phosphate. There was a product that one of the best cleaning agents that I knew, trisodium phosphate. Today, I can go to the hardware store and buy trisodium phosphate substitute. But I can also remember the day on the Rock River as a kid below the dam where the soap bubbles ran 20 and 30 feet high back when we had clean clothes thanks to the phosphates. Our clothes are still clean and now the river is cleaner. These are the type of things we're trying to learn more about so that our decisions are made knowledgeably and that the river has its say. Uh, to raise the water. awareness the once again. Yeah, our economy. To raise the awareness once again, what is the name of the organization? Root Pike Wind. Root Pike Watershed Initiative Network. Oh my. They do. Uh,